Hi everyone, so one of the most asked questions I get about Poke Rogue is any tips for classic mode? And since the game is ever growing, uh, I figured it's probably worthwhile making a dedicated tips video for classic mode. I've done plenty of other Poke Rogue content that will give you guys information, like what the shiny odds are and uh, different things like that. There's a lot of like good information in all of my content, but I've never specifically given direct tips on how to beat classic mode partially because at the end of the day uh pokey rogue there is going to be some rng to it but there are definitely pokemon that you could bring that will increase your odds of winning and there's also things that you can do that will help you win so um i asked my chat yesterday and we wrote down some things that might help you guys out uh, i will say if anyone is experienced and is watching this and has any tips that i didn't mention please leave them in the comments let's try and help people out if this video helps you at all i encourage you to uh go ahead and leave a like on it for me uh thank you kindly so the first tip about pokey rogue actually um i don't know if it's a default setting but you can actually play with controller just by default there is a, a setting if you come here to settings it used to be enabled by default i don't know if that's changed but uh you can turn on gamepad support and uh you can just play with your controller like that i personally prefer joy to key because uh that is it's just the buttons i've gotten used to uh playing pokey rogue all this time uh but there is uh controller support <laughs> so if you don't want to be hunched over your keyboard you can play with the controller jokes aside uh, that's obviously not a real tip so um i'm gonna go ahead and boot up a classic mode run i'm probably not gonna do a full classic mode run but uh yeah i mean i have a lot more pokemon than you guys i'm gonna assume that you are coming at this with uh with just the starter pokemon so just the the, the starters you don't have any egg moves yet that's what i'm gonna assume you're coming at this from so the first tip is uh to choose good starters i mean i'm a big advocate for play with your favorites uh but there are starters that are better than others not all of these starters are built the same so let me break it down the gen 9 starters are all phenomenal they don't have anything special in terms of forms but fuecoco for example gets this move called torch song uh when it evolves and torch song just raises its special attack every single time it's used and it's like an 80 base power fire move so it it, it just gets insane really really quickly uh it's a really bulky uh fire type fire ghost type it's just Honestly, it's probably one of the best starters of all time. So um, I cannot recommend Foy Coco enough for your fire starter. I think um, a good course of action here is to do fire, water, grass, uh, just so you've got coverage. So if you're going to choose fire, water, grass starters, I would recommend Foy Coco as the fire starter for sure. If you don't want to use Foy Coco, other options, Charmander, um, because you can, in this game, get Mega Charizard X, Y, or Gigantamax Charizard. I believe the way this game works is you can actually have access to all three of them and you can swap between them. So Charmander is never a bad option, but that is assuming that you do get a Gigantamax or a Mega Evolution. Uh, it is up to RNG at that point. There is a way you can increase your chances of getting one, but it's not guaranteed. There's Torchic as well, which uh, Blaziken, Mega Blaziken is a thing. Personally, not recommending it because uh, the way the movesets work in this game, they are based on, I believe, Generation 9's level up movesets. Or I think it's just whatever the most recent generation for that Pokemon is. Like there's some Pokemon, for example, that, you know, I think Furfro hasn't been in a Pokemon game since like Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon or something like that. So his moveset would probably pull from that. Uh, but Torchic doesn't, Torchic doesn't learn, uh, I think, I think it's best level, uh, best fire, <laughs> sorry. It's best fighting type move, I believe, is Reversal or Double Kick. I don't. I don't think it gets like high jump kick or anything like that by, by level up. It, it doesn't get a good fighting move, pretty much, uh, unless you get egg moves. So I want to double check that fact now because uh, I'm doubting myself. But I, I, I do know that it, it doesn't get good fighting moves. Yeah, reversal is the best fighting move that it gets by level up. And by TM, it doesn't really learn anything better either. It used to get focus punch, but focus punch has been nerfed now. So just understand if you're using Blaziken, you're going to be lacking uh, a good fighting time move. Uh, Incineroar is uh, arguably one of the best Pokemon in the game, uh, at least in VGC. I think that probably would translate over in game. Uh, but ultimately, I think your best bet is going for Pokemon with forms and uh, Score Bunny. Like previously mentioned, uh, Charizard has a Gigantamax form. Score Bunny also has a Gigantamax form. Uh, for the uninformed, uh, the way Mega Evolution and Gigantamax forms work is once you transform them, they do not transform back. They are that form for the rest of your run. I mean, you can transform them back if you want to, but there's no real reason to. And in the main series games, Gigantamax forms actually 
actually don't gain any stats, but in Poke Rogue they do. Gigantamax forms uh, are like Mega Evolutions, they gain 100 base stat total, uh, but Gigantamax forms are weighted more towards HP, but they do gain stats in other, you know, places. So G-Max Cinderace is going to be like 600 plus base stat total. Uh, same with, you know, G-Max Sobble, G-Max uh, Rillaboom. So my recommendation for a fire type personally is Fue Coco. If not Fue Coco, uh, Cinderace or Charmander, honestly. I think you want as much power as you can get. And um, what better way than just Gigantamaxing? As for good starters, um, Squirtle, it would be my first choice. I think uh, G-Max Blastoise or Mega Blastoise, I think they're both phenomenal options. Uh, I would highly recommend against using Totodile as much as I love him. Uh, Totodile doesn't learn a good water move until level like 60 odd. So, and it learns uh, Aqua Tail, which to be fair, most of your run, you will have Aqua Tail. I just don't think it's, I don't think it's worth it personally. I think Feraligatr isn't that good without egg moves. Uh, you can get Mega, Mega Swampert. Mega Swampert's pretty good. He's only got one weakness. Uh, there is, of course, Gigantamax Inteleon. Uh, I believe Gigantamax forms actually slow the Pokemon down. So um, another useful resource is the Pokerogue Wiki right here. Just go to wiki.pokerogue.net. And uh, right here, gameplay, you can click on forms. And if you scroll down, it'll have all the Gigantamax forms stats. So if we look at Inteleon, Inteleon is, ooh, it, yeah, it's, it's slower. It's not terrible. It goes to 110 base speed, which Inteleon, I believe, is usually 120. Uh, but Cinderace actually gains speed, which is interesting. Cinderace has 145 base attack. That's pretty gnarly. Inteleon's got 150 special attack, 110 speed. That's really good. As for your grass starter, uh, I would recommend Meowskarada because it gets a uh, flower trick. Uh, if not Meowskarada, Rillaboom, obviously. Uh, G-Max forms are really good. You obviously, you gotta get lucky and get a G-Max form. Uh, but if, you know, you don't, uh, Rillaboom is just a good Pokemon anyway. Uh, of course, there's Sceptile. He's a bit more frail. Wouldn't be my first choice. Uh, and then lastly, of course, Venusaur. Uh, Venusaur might be the best one, to be honest, because he does get thick fat, and I think that is really valuable. Um, you know, Ice and Fire not being as effective against Venusaur really really nice to be honest i would say maybe venusaur is the best grass starter it's hard to say i, I think venusaur though so if i'm starting this game now with all the knowledge that i have i would probably choose bulbasaur squirtle and fue coco that would be my my choice personally and when you're first starting this game those are the only like things you can do you can't choose an additional pokemon you only have access to the starters so that's just what I'm going to go with personally. And then you're going to be uh, launched into a battle. Uh, so I would recommend personally, I mean, I would personally recommend putting your game speed at five. But if you don't want to play with that, you know, by all means, at least have it at like two, 2.5 or something. Uh, I'll just show off my settings in case anybody like wants to copy them. Uh, my damage numbers are on fancy because I think it looks cool. Uh, the UI theme is default. You can change your window color by, uh, you know, changing the window color. Yellow is my favorite color, but I think this one's actually really, really cool too. Tutorials, I would leave them on, honestly. Enable retries. Personally, I have them off. A question I get a lot is, is uh, refreshing and save scumming, is that cheating? I personally don't think so because there's literally a feature in the game to have retrying. So if you, if you, tur if you turn on retrying, if you lose a battle, it will just basically spit you back out to that battle and let you try it again. I personally don't like doing that, but um, it's not cheating because it's literally a feature in the game. Uh, sprite set, uh, my sprite set settings is prioritize animation. Um, some of the animations are a little funky, like Grafai, for example, uh, but that's why most of my animated, my, my sprites are animated after generation five. Uh, move animations, I have them on just because, you know, why not? Show stats on level up, I personally turned it off because it got a little obnoxious after a while. Uh, EXP gain speed is on skip, HP bar speed, faster, instant, doesn't really matter. And uh, gender, you uh, your gender will change the gender of the rival, and that is all my settings. So yeah, from there, uh, you just start. And uh, the first tip I'm going to give you is focus on one to two Pokemon at first in terms of leveling up. I got really lucky here and I got given Giga Drain as a TM, so I'm going to teach that to Bulbasaur. Obviously, my Bulbasaur already has Sludge Bomb, your Bulbasaur won't 
have, have sludge bomb but yeah i got really lucky at the start of this so yeah you can catch pokemon but um i would recommend just trying to focus on like one to two pokemon at first in terms of leveling up i mean you can also maybe just do three so you know maybe grab rare candies when you can i personally like checking how much exp a pokemon needs to level up and i like trying to get the most of it so if coco needs the most so i'll give it to him but yeah maybe just focus on the first three pokemon you can catch other pokemon if you want right you can catch tandemouse but maybe don't worry about leveling up until later Ah, er, there we go. First point uh, as well. Tandem House has pickup. Pokemon with the ability pickup are really useful. Something else I do recommend, uh, grab lures early on because uh, grabbing lures will uh, allow more likely double battles to pop up, which uh, I mean, if you're battling more Pokemon, you're you're going to get more experience, right? But, you know, if you're if you're struggling, you know, within reason, if you're really, really struggling and uh, you're almost at the end of, uh, say you're like on floor number 17 and you're like Pokemon are really struggling and you find a lure, maybe don't pick up the lure yet. Maybe just get to the end, heal up and then worry about a lure. And something that I should also mention, uh, don't be ashamed if you, uh, if you fail your your like first run or whatever or you fail like 10 times because all that's gonna do is it's gonna give like get you more starter pokemon to start with and you won't only have you know the starter pokemon because honestly the biggest hurdles in poke rogue is the rivals rayquaza and the final battle against eternatus those are the two biggest hurdles and something to think about is that those pokemon are weak to ice both of them are weak to ice so if you can at least try and get some ice type moves on your pokemon that's obviously gonna that's gonna help you it's not gonna guarantee victory of course because you know if if you get a nice type move on bulbasaur for example i mean it's not possible but let's say you get an ice type move on Bulbasaur. That ice type move uh, is useless if Bulbasaur just gets one tapped by Rayquaza's Dragon Ascent. So um, you gotta you gotta think about it. But um, ice is definitely a good type to have. Uh, but here we are at our first rival battle. So um, something I think that is worth noting is where all the important battles happen. So the first rival battle is at floor eight. The floor that you are on is up here at the top right. All the other floors uh, are on screen over there. Floor eight is arrival, 25 is arrival, 55 is arrival, 95 is arrival, 145 is arrival. And then you don't see another rival battle until 192 or 195 rather, sorry. But in between that, you have elite four battles, elite four, one, two, three, four. And then of course there's the champion battle. Not to overwhelm you, but the elite four battles, at least as of right now, are the same. What I'm trying to say is, if you fight against uh, the Kanto Elite Four, you will face the other Kanto Elite Four members. But the champion is random, I believe, every single time. You will not be guaranteed to face Blue, for example. You could face Cynthia after fighting the Kanto Elite Four. So, with that in mind, you can prepare. If you decide you rock up to the Elite Four and uh, you see Lorelei on floor 182, just know that on floor 184, you are going to be facing Bruno and then Agatha and then Lance. So that will give you a little bit of uh, preparation as to which Pokemon you want to lead with uh, and also which Pokemon you uh, want to make sure is fully healed up on your team. Uh, the rival starter, by the way, is random every single time. She will have a starter Pokemon and she will have a bird. Um, Leech Seed. Ah, Leech Seed is a very good move. I would definitely recommend having Leech Seed all the way to the very end because uh, one of the best ways to beat Eternatus is with residual damage and Leech Seed is residual damage. But yes, in regards to uh, when you battle trainers, try and remember those floor numbers. Even if you take a screenshot of this video right now, make sure you're prepared whenever you're approaching one of those floors. As you can see up here, uh, there is potions and revives and ethers. You will get access to more items as the game goes on and uh, the money that you make up here in the top right uh, I would honestly try and save it the best you can. I will say don't be shy to use a potion early on because uh, potions are dirt cheap early on. They're only 50. Uh, so for the first maybe 20 floors, don't be shy. Use a potion if you need one. Potions are really good because they restore 20 HP or 10%. So, you know, even later on, potions can be useful. Don't be wasteful of your money. Definitely, like a big tip is save as much money as you can. If you just so happen to get items that help you get more money, take them. 
Like, do anything you can to save money. I personally don't re-roll at all because I, I, I find it to be a waste of money. Or once I've um, beaten all like the main hurdles and my team's healed up for the for the Eternatus battle, that's when I start re-rolling, to be honest. But, um, you know, you can do it at your own discretion. Uh, and then we've got this Lechonk here. Uh, now, boss Pokemon, something that's changed since when I first beat this, Boss Pokemon have passive abilities. If you want to know what these passive abilities are, the Poke Rogue Wiki has got you covered. If you click on starters and then you click on generation one, it will tell you passive ability. So for example, this Pokemon is a generation nine Pokemon. I'm gonna control F Lechonk. Tells me Lechonk's passive ability is simple. I don't believe Lechonk's gonna have anything that will take advantage of simple, but another thing to keep in mind, um, on the topic of knowing uh, when something is going to be happening on specific floors, every 10 floors you get healed, of course. Uh, and on the 10th floor, there's always going to be some sort of boss battle. If it's a boss wild Pokemon or if it's a trainer, there's always going to be something. What I was told was, I don't know if this is 100% true, but what I was told is you will either get your first gym battle at floor 20 or floor 30. And after that, every 30 waves, you will get a gym battle. So uh, definitely be prepared for gym battles because uh, they they can be pretty difficult, especially later on. Citrus berries are always nice to have. I'm going to bring that. But yeah, after you beat your first rifle battle, you actually get given the uh, EXP share, which uh, will help bring your other Pokemon up in level. I don't think I actually went fully into it, but um, pick up is a really good ability because if the Pokemon you face has an item, uh, the pickup Pokemon is guaranteed after defeating that Pokemon to take one of their items. So for example, this Tandem Mouse here, whenever we face po like wild Pokemon with items and we defeat them, this Tandem Mouse is just going to pick up items randomly and then you can use the transfer feature down here in the bottom right that my camera is covering. I promise there is a transfer feature down here. Transfer held item from one Pokemon to another. Uh, if you click on that, I can transfer the Citrus Berry from Bulbasaur to Foycoco. And you can do the same with Tandemouse once Tandemouse starts stacking items. Uh, as for, you know, there's a lot of early right Pokemon with pickup. Uh, I believe Zigzagoon is a, is a really good one that people love. Um, so yeah, definitely, if you can, I mean, this this early part of the game has a lot of, uh, has a lot of those Pokemon that learn pickup. So definitely pick up a Pokemon with pickup. Uh, and bring it for a while to stack up on items because items especially like berries are a huge part of this game the enemy spams so many berries that boosts so many of its stats do it back give your pokemon uh the same advantage that they do uh pick up as much berries as you can another piece of advice uh is x items uh this is something that i would personally recommend uh worrying about when you're going into an important battle so for example let's say um i know that there's a there's an important battle coming up i mean even if you're not coming into an important battle right this increases the attack for all of your party members by one stage for five battles this is very this is a very good item i feel like it is slightly overlooked i mean it is it's honestly overlooked by me too this is a very good item to get especially on the come up to eternatus in my opinion when you're going up to fight eternatus once you beat floor 195, you are going to want to just be, be grabbing as many of these as you can. Like that's when you start using your reroll and you start trying to get as many X items as you can because they will help you against Eternatus. Um, but they, all, they help you all the time. Like they, they will help as long as you have a Pokemon that have attack, which actually I don't think any of my Pokemon do have physical attacks. Well, Bulbasaur has tackle, but like I would rather just use Sludge Bomb. As long as your Pokemon can actually make use of the X item, do it grab the x item they are they are really good items especially when you're about to come up against a battle me personally i'm on floor 13 my next big battle is on floor 20 uh and this will expire by floor 18 so i'm not going to worry about it i'm going to take the nugget because money is scarce and i want as much money as i can get and uh, i hope you can see that i'm mostly focusing on uh one pokemon right now i'm going to grab this potion for squirtle zuba is kind of annoying I'm going to use Foycoco. I don't know if Foycoco will win, to be honest. Let's go, Foycoco. Uh, I'm... Ooh, Muddy Water. Uh, Muddy Water is pretty decent. I'm going to teach that to Squirtle. I'm just going to drop Tackle. Meowth. Here is another good Pokemon to get. Definitely recommend Meowth because of that. Meowth gets Fake Out uh, and... A lot of battles that you will face in this game are double battles and faking out one of the opponents is really good. Meowth also has access to pickup, which is, again, I mean, we already talked about a pickup's really good. Uh, I think most people prefer Technician Meowth because it does a lot more damage. Um, but if you get pickup, I wouldn't say that that's a bad thing. I think pickup Meowth is pretty good. We just so happen to get random trainer battle. Uh, that is something that you really can't determine when it's going to happen. Trainer battles will happen at random. 
Uh, I can't really give you any advice on when to expect them, but uh, trainer battles do happen. This guy's acid spraying me, so I'm going to switch into Fue Coco. Something I will say is don't be afraid to stack Pokemon off as well. I shouldn't have stacked off Fue Coco there. I should have sent something else in. Whatever, I'll send a Meowth. Take him out, and I'll just faint because faint is a priority move, and I win. I'll stack off this Meowth for the greater good of sending in my Bulbasaur uh, to not take damage unnecessarily. Don't be afraid to stack Pokemon off if they don't like serve you for this battle, for example. I'm getting fully healed in two more turns. And I don't think me losing Meowth right now is a big detriment. Uh, poison Powder and Sleep Powder, uh, like I said, moves that uh do residual damage are good unfortunately eternatus is a poison type so you can't poison him unless you have a corrosion pokemon um so i'm not going to bother teaching poison powder but i'll teach sleep powder because it will help with catching pokemon uh and we have a rare candy here and if we use it on bulbasaur bulbasaur will hit the level cap and evolve so um let's do that that's going to help us against our first battle here our, our first potential gym leader battle I don't know what determines if it's a gym leader battle or not i don't know if it's random but um yeah so like i said Mostly focus on one Pokemon, in my opinion. One or two. For me, it's mostly been Squirtle and Divisor. And uh, yeah, that Zubat had a Citrus Berry and it just got stolen by a Pickup Mon. Panamos has it, so I'm going to give it to Ivysaur for now. I'm going to do X Special Attack. And uh, this Boss Bidoof is not going to know what hit him. If you have enough damage behind you, you can just straight up one-shot bosses too. And we just picked up another item from that Bidoof. I'm going to send in Fuecoco here because he's definitely better suited to take on these types of Pokemon. Portal's Learning Bite, which uh, I'm going to pass up on for now. A hey, nice Ultra Ball. Um... Ultra Balls are pretty good. Uh, I think I will prioritize Ultra Balls for now because uh, catching Pokemon is important. Oh my god. Okay, I just got really lucky and got this Lock Capsule. Uh, lock Capsule is a pretty good item. Uh, it allows you to lock rarities of other items. So when you re-roll, it will cost a lot of money, but it means that you're going to get another good item of like you're gonna you're guaranteed to get another good item pretty much because items have rarities. There's the Pokeball tier, Great Ball tier, Ultra Ball tier uh rogue tier and then master tier so i'm gonna take this law capsule obviously generally if the if the item is a rarer item you want to take it you know items do stack as well by the way so i can literally have like if the item is available to stack like this uh exp charm i have two of them i can get i think i think it stacks up to 10 maybe i'm not quite sure but it stacks or a sphere um Squirtle learns Aura Sphere and it's a really good move. I'll give that to Squirtle. I'm getting really lucky with these TMs, I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna give the Rare Candy to Ivysaur. And here we are, second rifle battle. This is uh, where a lot of people say they, they struggle, they struggle to win. Um, but uh, if you follow, I mean, I, I get why. Like this battle is, a, I think this is a pretty decisive battle. I'm gonna sack off my Tandem House here because I want a clean switch into my Squirtle to hit a Muddy Water. That, is, that was a crit, that is so much damage, dude. Another one and less of crits shouldn't kill me though. So then I Aura Sphere and it's dead, cool. So you see there, I used Squirtle to take on the super effective Pokemon and preserved my Ivysaur for the Primflop. So now I'm gonna go into Meowth. I'm gonna let Meowth die. I'm just gonna get a cheeky fake out off and I'm just gonna faint if it ever wants to kill me that is yep okay thank you yeah clean switch into Ivysaur I mean to be honest it probably wasn't necessary to sack off Meowth I'm just being very like protective of my uh of my Ivysaur right now because Ivysaur is like my like I need Ivysaur to win pretty much I'm gonna Giga Drain yum there we go uh beat that battle consistently um I would maybe not focus on one Pokemon as much as I did there because it definitely can bite you in the ass if that one Pokemon dies for whatever reason. Uh, but it worked out for me. Uh, here we have a super EXP charm, uh, which increases EXP by 60%. I'm definitely going to pick that up. I'm going to heal up my War Turtle. Flamethrower. Dude, I'm getting so lucky with these TMs. I usually don't get this lucky. Unless they changed something and made TMs more common. I think that that's definitely possible because people did complain about that. Incinerate. Incinerate is a good move because it uh, it burns up berries. I don't think it's implemented to do that yet, but I'm going to teach it to him anyway. There's there, there's something about Incinerate that's not implemented. Uh, but here you are. This is my first gym battle at floor 30, which means if that viewer that told me is correct, my next gym battles will be floor 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. I have no more sludge bombs. Uh, I should have been paying attention to that. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to Giga Drain here. I'm going to send in War Turtle uh, to sack because um, he's definitely not as useful as Fue Coco. I don't want Fue Coco taking any damage for any like for any reason. Uh, Torrent Muddy Water is able to take out the Weeping Bell, which is hype. Fue Coco is going to evolve. We've got an anime moment, guys. Fue Coco is evolving mid battle. This thing. Okay, we'll let War Turtle go down so we can get a clean switch into Crocolore. And uh, thankfully, I've got Flamethrower. 
Uh, I mean, yeah, we're just gonna... Oof, that hurt. It's gonna put us into blaze range, which is gonna allow us to take out the Vile Plume. And then we've got Tangela here. Honestly, if you're smarter than me, preserve your good moves. I did not preserve my Sludge Bomb, I was just spamming. Uh, but yeah, for being Erica there, you will get given an egg voucher. If this is your first time being Erica, you will get given an egg voucher times five. So you can come here to egg gotcha and you can pull for more Pokemon to use in your runs. I'm just going to go ahead and pull a shiny egg. I got a rare one. There's different tiers to eggs. I've made previous videos on it, but uh, basically the skinny of it is uh, you get common, rare, epic, legendary and um, common eggs take 10 floors to hatch. Rare eggs take 25. Epic eggs take 50 and legendary take 100. But yeah, now that um, I've beat the first gym, I think it's uh, a bit more acceptable to start like leveling up, you know, maybe start leveling up maybe three or four Pokemon. For being the gym, you get given a second EXP share. So your, your Pokemon's EXP, they're going to be getting a little bit more anyway. Crocolor is going to go crazy here because uh, the sun is up for some reason. I'm going to teach Snarl. Uh, I would actually recommend if you're having, if you're using Crocolor, use Snarl against Eternatus because uh, it will lower its special attack every single time you use it, which is uh, what you want. You want Eternatus to be weaker against you. Uh, the sun's up, so water moves aren't going to do as much damage to me. So I'm just going to go ahead and stay in. I'm just built like, I'm just built like that. Keep this. Just just be a water type because the sun's up. That's another recommendation. Weather is a very good, very good tool. My Crocolor is literally sweeping right now because I'm in the sun. I mean, I've got Flamethrower too. That definitely helps. But that one battle just put Crocolor up like seven levels. He is uh, very hurt now though. So I maybe, uh, maybe, maybe give him a little super potion. Get some Pokeballs. Why not? Oh, a Wild Needle King. Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, I think we're okay to handle it. Ah, hazards. Hazards stay against you for five floors, by the way. So uh, be wary of hazards. Ooh, we can actually catch this. Let me give it a shot. Why not? Low kicks. Oh my god. If I could recommend any Pokemon, I'd recommend low kicks. Uh, oh yeah, toxic spikes get eaten up by uh, poison types. So if you have a poison type like I do, just send it in. But yeah, toxic spikes stay against you. Or if you use it against the opponent, they stay against the opponent for five turns. Which I think is pretty neat. I'm gonna go ahead and sleep out of this guy and I'm gonna catch him too because uh, I mean I want the candy for low kicks and also low kicks is really good. I'm not gonna swap anyone out actually. I'm just gonna keep my team for now. Encore is a really good move. I'm gonna give that to Tandemouse. I'm gonna pick up more nuggets because I like money. I'm getting a lot of trainer battles on the on the climb here. But as you can see, my guys are significantly over leveled i mean these are breeders though breeders are generally under leveled because they always have like a team of six and that's just kind of their thing in game like they don't come at you with decent levels they come at you with just a bunch of pokemon so they are generally under leveled but um i would bet that uh, i'm almost i think i'm almost at the level cap right now which is um which is a good sign that you're uh you're getting good levels on your yeah here we go i hit level cap already on, on crocolore that's a good sign that you're doing a good job leveling up your pokemon uh the map is a good item to get because uh it lets you choose where you go which can definitely help so for example if it uh, asks you like hey do you want to go to fairy cave then say yes i want a fairy type take me to fairy cave ivy or of course evolves into Venus or level 32 and uh, as soon as you have a Pokemon that is capable of mega evolving and or Gigantamaxing which Venusaur is both you will now have the chance to come across uh well actually I think you always have the chance to get the mega bracelet or the G Max band um but once you get those items you will then get the chance to get their uh max mushrooms or the venusaur right so you need to get the mega bracelet of the gmax band first but yeah tandemus just evolved i think it still has pickup though to be honest i think it's one of those where, where it keeps pickup i'll heal up crocolore and a boss kecleon yeah the boss is level 26 i'm level 32 we're well ahead in level oh it gets cheek pouch never mind boo tandemus sucks oh no sorry uh, mouse hold sucks take this kecleon out like it's nobody's business or turtles or an aqua tail no thanks he's a special attacker and uh, our pickup Pokemon picked up an item. And then we got to choose forest or cave. Uh, I think we've seen enough uh, grass area. So we're going to go cave. That's only if you pick up the map, though. You got to get lucky with that. And uh, coming to the cave will allow us to come across different types of Pokemon that we maybe want to add to our team. You definitely want to go for type diversity. Max floor is a really good item because uh, you uh, get 25 floors of potential double battles, which... Um, I mean, like I said, double battles are nice. Put ourselves a Persian now. Carbos. Oh, these items are really good. These items increase the holder's base speed by 10%. The higher IVs, the higher the stack will limit. These are phenomenal items. Um, I'm Venusaur has already got decent speed, so I'm just going to give him the, the speed. Uh, another good Pokemon to bring to runs is Ursaring. Or, well, Ursaluna, technically. If you need to know how a Pokemon evolve, uh, I would recommend going to the Poke Rogue Wiki, like I said. You can definitely find out how Pokemon evolve there. Synthesis is a good move, but since Venusaur already has Leech Heat and Giga Drain, I'm 
I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, but synthesis is a good move because it basically like the way you heal in this game is by either getting lucky on the item draw or uh, by paying money. And if you're trying to save money, you don't want to maybe you know spend money on healing your Pokemon. So um, it might be worth just uh, having synthesis to heal yourself up uh, after you know against uh, against weaker Pokemon, so you don't have to waste money. Um, but I already have plenty of healing with Venusaur, so I'm okay. Uh, Torch Song, like I said, 80 power move. Raise a special attack every single time you use it. Broken as hell, definitely want that. Silk Scarf, items like these are phenomenal. They increase the power of type moves by 20%. Uh, for example, um, Persian or Mousehold, they both have normal moves. Uh, their normal type moves are boosted by 20% and the items stack so you can get some crazy damage just from, from just from these items alone I've not really been giving these guys any good moves because I, I don't really I wasn't planning on keeping them But um, I'll give the Persian the silk scarf for now something. I just did there uh, If you get a rare candy and your Pokemon is a level cap you can give that Pokemon the rare candy and it will gain a level. Uh, but something to know about this, after level 200, uh, one of Eternatus' moves, Dynamax Cannon, does double damage. So if your Pokemon is level 201 or over, whatever, if you're over level 200, Dynamax Cannon is going to do more damage to you. So think twice, you know, maybe maybe give, um, maybe make a Fairy type level 201. Don't, don't do it to just any old Pokemon. I will teach shell smash to squirrel why not because setup moves are really good in this game i'm personally not much of a setup move player i don't really like swords dancing and shell smashing and stuff like that my setup moves are are mostly like torch song and stuff like if i'm gonna set up i will hope the move does damage too you know like power up punch torch song that's just my play style um but setup moves are really good if you're able to get a setup move off you can go crazy um gyarados with dragon dance is a phenomenal choice um here we go we got our blast toys now just gonna spit some general knowledge at you um some types of pokemon to prioritize trying to catch uh ice types or pokemon just with ice type moves uh, i'll have flash cannon on here set up pokemon like i said anything with like uh you know swords dance dragon dance shell smash quiver dance any sort of move that will set up your set up your you know pokemon to have you know that that's why that's why this guy's so good because torch song is basically a setup move while also doing damage it's kind of insane uh not against a shuckle with half uh, well well baked body though i forgot that was his passive ability um but uh yeah you want setup moves i'm not gonna lose to a shuckle get out of here uh and after doing 50 floors you get the golden pokeball which adds one item option at the end of every battle so you get more you get more items for uh for beating 50 floors pretty much now we can go badlands or beach uh, i'm gonna go badlands because i've already got water type so i don't really need one but having multiple water types isn't necessarily a bad thing okay so here's where the the lock rarities comes in if i lock rare like rarities and i re-roll here it costs more money but this will guarantee re-roll to another well maybe not it might it might just re-roll to another rogue ball uh but it will guarantee re-roll to another item in the rogue tier uh Personally, I'm just going to take the rogue ball because I don't really want to waste money. And we beat rival battle uh, against Ivy and we're hatching our egg that we did earlier. Ooh, it's a Gumi. Bold nature Gumi with flash cannon. Pretty cool. Uh, that just goes to your star selection. You don't get to keep that Gumi or anything for this run. Double battles are nice because you get more EXP, but it also gives you more options for Pokemon to, to choose from to like potentially catch and use, you know. I actually want to try and catch this Mudsdale, so I'm going to... To catch a Mudsdale, you've got to take out the one next to it. So I'm going to sleep out of the Mudsdale and I'm going to Aura Sphere the Dugtrio. And I keep missing Sleep Powder, dude. Thank you. Dugtrio is going to dig. And the Mudsdale woke up because it has an item. God damn it. Dugtrio digs into Blastoise. Dugtrio is dead now, though. I just missed Sleep Powder again. Give me a break, man. I'm going to fake out Sleep Powder. Nice. We caught it. Woohoo. Um, don't know what I had that I didn't have, but uh, we caught the we caught the Mudsdale. Wow, Mudsdale's pretty good if it has stamina. By the way, Venusaur's dead. No, and this is what I mean. Okay, we're at a predicament. Uh, two of my main guys are dead, and uh, we're about we're approaching floor sixty. So uh, I see there's a revive down here. Uh, I'm gonna spend money on my Venusaur. I'm gonna super potion up my Venusaur, which takes two. And then I'm going to use the revive down here on my Blastoise. So Blastoise is not going to be at full HP for this battle, uh, which a little unfortunate because it is a rock trainer. Uh, but yeah, every 30 floors, it seems, um, after, depending on if it's floor uh, 20 or 30, it'll either be, uh, you know, 50, 80, 110, 140, 170, or it'll be uh, like I have 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. Uh, 
pay more attention to your PP. I don't have any Giga Drains. So I'm going to sleep out of this Golem. I'm going to switch into Blastoise. Golem woke up. God damn it. Not my proudest moment. I'm not going to lie. I'll Muddy Water. Just try. I, I missed. I missed. Okay. Whatever. I'm sludge bombing you. Chat, this battle might be cooked because I was not paying attention. All right. There's only one man that can pull this back. Mr. Dirge. Go crazy. Torch Song. Got the special attack buff. Broke his sturdy. Shadow Ball. Kill. Nope, didn't kill. God damn it. We're not out yet, though. We're not out yet, though. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Shadow Ball again. Will-O-Wisp. No, not right now. Hex, not right now. Hex and Will-O-Wisp is a decent strat, but uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Shadow Ball. Die. Yes. Uh, Shadow Ball. It lived. Okay, we did considerable damage to his team, though. Okay, my, my three main guys are down. Needle King. Uh, has Megahorn. Megahorn kills the Amora, And then we just got this Golem. I'm gonna Megahorn. Kills the Mega, uh, kills the Golem. And, uh, we won. Despite my, uh... Despite my like stupidity, I, I won that battle. I definitely should have lost there. Uh, but now we get to choose if we go to desert or mountain. Another piece of advice that I don't actually do this at all. But um, if you come here to the Poke Rogue Wiki, uh, you can actually look at biomes. So we're going to go to desert or mountain. Uh, we can look at desert and we can look at mountain. And can we, we can see what Pokemon live here. Uh, so mountain has a lot of birds. So if you're looking for a bird, it tells you like how rare they are. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, Mountain has Knackly. Knackly is very good. And potential boss Garganackle. Corviknight is also very good because Corviknight gets Unnerve. And Unnerve makes it so berries can't be eaten. Uh, as for Desert, uh, Sandile is really good. Crocodile is a really good Pokemon. Um, but yeah, no, I think we're definitely going to go Mountain here. Something that is cool to know as well. Uh, stat increases go through. Uh, uh, I, 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 unless you're fighting a trainer, the stat buffs that you get. So like this Torch Song on my Skeleturge. I am still plus one on special attack. So it, it, it goes through uh, after, you know, after battles, unless you withdraw your Pokemon and send them back out for a, for a trainer battle. So right now I'm mainly looking for Garganackle uh, because Garganackle with Salt Cure, uh, that's that's his signature move. Salt Cure does wonders against Eternatus. And uh, I mean, it does wonders against Rayquaza too. Uh, I cannot recommend Salt Cure enough. It does a lot of damage. Corviknight, very good Pokemon. I cannot recommend Corviknight enough uh, because Corviknight gets access to Unnerve. Like I said, I don't know if this one will have Unnerve. I don't know if Unnerve is like a hidden ability or what. I don't think it is. And Un Unnerve stops the opponent from eating berries. And that is a big reason why uh, people get swept, in my opinion, is because the opponent will eat so many berries that their stats are just insanely buffed uh, and you, you can't do anything about it. This one has pressure. I mean, even without Unnerve, uh, Corviknight is a very good Pokemon. I'm going to get rid of Mousehold. Corviknight is a steel flying type. It's very, it's a, steel types are, are phenomenal. Like you, having multiple steel types is never a bad thing. EXP all, I'm gonna pick that up because I want more EXP. We're fighting our random trainers and because I got switched out, my Skeleturge no longer has the, the plus four onto Torch Song. Uh, it went back down to uh, neutral. Um, so we're just gonna have to, oh, this is a glitch by the way. You're not meant, you're usually you're not meant to be able to do a double battle where it's 2v1. Uh, these guys are meant to send out two Pokemon, but they don't have two Pokemon. It's a glitch. Enjoy the easy battle, I guess. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be getting Garganackle this time around. Um, but definitely, if you are struggling with Eternatus, uh, Garganackle, like, I swear by him, I think he is the best Pokemon to beat Eternatus with. Uh, he also is very good against Rayquaza. So if you ever see a Garganackle, pick him up. Pick him up, take him home. All right, the boss is a Pidgeot. Yeah, a lot of dragons. I mean, this might be a rough biome to get through, honestly, because we don't actually have much to deal with dragon types. All right, we're going to try and catch him. Pomoto obtained. I didn't have him as a starter already, so that's hype. Um, I'm going to drop Persian now. Uh, wait, hold on, let's see. What do you have? Eh, you don't have anything that I'm really attached to. I'm going to drop Persian. As nice as pickup is, I don't I don't rely on it too heavily. I'm different than y'all. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but if this is grayed out, it means that the Pokemon has something that you don't have yet, whether that be... Uh, gender, uh, ability, I think that's mostly what it tells you. Um, so I either didn't have a girl Komodo or I didn't have soundproof. I think I didn't have soundproof, so that makes sense. So uh, now now I have soundproof Komodo from the starter screen, which is nice. And here we are, Rival 95. So something interesting about Rival 95 is she starts using Terrastalized Pokemon. Terrastalized Pokemon will just change their type completely. This thing is a pure water type now, but its water type damage is like basically it's doubled. Or well, it's usually water type damage from an Empoleon. The way stat damage works water type moves have point every move in the game has 0 0.01 let's just say 100 to make it easier 
every move has 100% damage. If a water type is using a water type move, it is 150% damage. If it is a terrestrialized Pokemon, it is 200% damage. So water type moves from this Empoleon will do 200% damage, which is uh, a lot. I'm going to switch into Kamo here because we're going to resist the Hydro Pump. That still did so much damage. Uh, and then I'm just going to close combat. He's going to swap. The AI likes to swap a lot. So um, definitely try and learn and use that to your advantage. I think I should have speed. Nope, I don't. That's fine. I was fine with losing my Kamo, honestly. That will allow me to go into Dirge, hit a Flamethrower. Yep, here comes the Empoleon. Like I said, the AI switches a lot. Uh, Hydro Pump's probably coming my way again, so let's go into Blastoise this time. We'll take it. She might stay in because she might not view me as a threat, so I'm just going to Aura Sphere. Whirlpool. Yeah, she's trapped me now. Going to Whirl uh, Aura Sphere again. The Terra Pokemon is honestly terrifying. Venusaur shoot out speed and... Yep, yep, she swapped. Okay. Volcarona. I'm going to swap out. Obviously, it's going to use a Fire Move. I'll sack Carbonite. That's fine. I'm going to Nido King. I'm just going to Earthquake. I don't know exactly why she swapped. Dude, her team is crazy now oh my god she got a garchomp i'm gonna earthquake again just get as much damage as i can it's gonna dig don't know why you would do that earthquake does double damage underground yeah garchomp doesn't really learn any better moves than dig though so keep that in mind mega horn nice explosion doesn't take out my needle king though pidgeot comes in uh mega horn no it's faster okay yeah pidgeot's quite fast now i'm going to torch song boom i would venture a guess that my skeleton should have speed this yep just take out the empoleon and then we've got volcarona here take the hurricane hit the torch song torch song again take the hurricane i won't lie this was definitely not my best performance against this battle. I definitely could have played a lot smarter, but um, I didn't predict the AI at all. Uh, and uh, we have another five floors to go. So uh, we definitely want to use a max revive on Blastoise just so like we're not like too down and out. I don't want to waste money though. So I'm going to just hope that we can get through with uh, the Pokemon that we have left. Uh, floor 100 isn't going to be anything crazy. It'll just be like a, a boss Pokemon, which I mean, could be a legendary or something, but... We should be okay. This thing could have sturdy. Nope. And then floor 100. We should be able to take that easily. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ether up Torch Song, actually. Why not? Rampardos. Yeah, we should We should just one-shot this, I think. Yeah, we're fine. Cool. And we get to go Volcano or Wasteland. Um, Let's go Wasteland again. Why not? We're kind of in a loop right now, just going to the same areas. This doesn't always happen, I promise. There is 35 biomes to choose from, and we're just getting unlucky, I believe. I've now shown you uh, 100 floors, though, which is a lot longer than I was actually uh, gonna show you. I hope um, some of those tips helped. Uh, some more tips. If you are doing more than just starting with the generic, you know, star Pokemon, let's say, let's say you've caught a shiny or two, uh, and you still haven't beat classic mode, uh, I would recommend trying to fit those shinies onto your team somehow um, because I've mentioned this in previous videos, but shiny Pokemon boosts your chances of getting better items. The more shinies you have, the higher the odds. So that's why you'll see people doing endless runs, have a bunch of shiny Pokemon with them. So uh, definitely, if you can, bring shiny Pokemon with you for your runs. I understand not everyone has that luxury, but um, try and squeeze them onto your team if you can. I will... Uh, I've got all this, all these tips written down on a notepad. I will have <clears throat> all of this in the description as well. So if you, you know, want to refer back to uh, any like good tips, um, just read the description. But yeah, uh, at the end of the day, this game has a lot of RNG and sometimes you just get unlucky. There has been countless times where I lose my run at like floor 25 as well. I don't always go all the way from start to finish. I do lose quite often. Maybe more often than not, it's a roguelike. It's gonna happen, and uh, all you can do at that point is dust yourself off and try again. Another important thing to note, specific Pokemon that are really good and I think you should definitely look out for, like I mentioned, Garganacle. Uh, Archeraladon is apparently really, really strong. I personally haven't used one yet, but Archeraladon, Joaladon's evolution. I imagine he would go really well against uh, Rayquaza and also Eternatus because he's a Steel Dragon type. Steel Dragon is a phenomenal type against those two. No super effective damage against him. Uh, and Fairy Steel types. Um, specifically Mega Mawile, if you can help it. But uh, Fairy Steel type is really, really good against Eternatus. Uh, it, the, Eternatus has two phases. The first phase doesn't have Flamethrower. It only has Sludge Bomb and uh, I think it's Eterna Beam. Obviously, both of those are... Uh, Fairy Steel is immune to both of those moves. So... Um, the first stage of Eternatus, you can take no damage against and uh, have your full team ready to battle the, the main boss uh, if you have a Fairy Steel type. Uh, if you don't have a Fairy Steel type, if you have individual Fairies and Steels, so like say, say you have Archivalidon and Clefable, you can swap around. You can have Archivalidon out, bait the Eterna Beam, switch to Clefable. Clefable will take no damage, and then Eternatus has to recharge. 
do damage with Clefable, swap back to Archer Valadon on the Sludge Bomb, and just repeat that. That's another way around um, the first stage of Eternatus. The second stage, unfortunately, has Flamethrower, though, uh, so you got to be careful against that. Uh, but yeah, I hope these tips were helpful. If you guys have any tips of your own, please leave them in the comments, and uh, good luck out there.